This is an example problem showing how to use the energy balance equation to calculate the exit properties of gas coming out of a diffuser. The entrance and exit properties of the gas are shown in the table. In addition, we're told that the diffuser is adiabatic, which means no heat transfer is taking place. We're told that the exit velocity is much, much less than the entrance velocity, and we're told that the exit area is three times the entrance area. First, we'll write down the general energy balance equation. Since the flow rate in the system is constant, this is a steady flow system. Therefore, the total energy balance equation is given by Q minus W equals H2 minus H1 plus 1 half V2 squared minus V1 squared plus G Z2 minus Z1 where Q is heat, W is work, H is enthalpy, V is velocity, G is gravity, and Z is the height. Since in this case, we have no heat transfer, no boundary work done, and no change in the gravitational potential energy, we can reduce the equation to a simpler form, shown here, given by just the difference between the enthalpies and the kinetic energies at the entrance and exit. The only one of these quantities that was given in the problem was V1, the entrance velocity. So we need to find H1 and H2 in order to find the exit velocity and exit temperature. At 65 degrees Fahrenheit and 13 PSI, air is an ideal gas. Therefore, we can use the air ideal gas property tables to find the enthalpy of 125.4 BTU per pound mass. Note we did have to use interpolation to find that. If you need help with interpolation, you can see my video, Introduction to Interpolation. Note that the problem statement explicitly tells us that the exit velocity is much, much less than the entrance velocity. That means that the kinetic energy at the exit can be neglected in the overall energy balance equation. That's because if V2 is less than V1, then V2 squared is definitely less than V1 squared. So our final energy balance equation ends up being that the enthalpy plus the kinetic energy at the entrance is equal to the enthalpy at the exit. Plugging in the numbers for each quantity, we then find that the enthalpy at the exit, H2, is 136.6 BTU per pound mass. Now that we know the enthalpy at the exit, we can use the ideal gas property tables again, this time to find the temperature at the exit. We find that the temperature at the exit is 571.6 Rankin or 111.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Once again, we used interpolation to get that number. So if you need help with interpolation, see my Introduction to Interpolation video. Next, we will use the conservation of mass principle to find the exit velocity. Area times velocity over the specific volume is equal to the mass flow rate. This must be equal at both the entrance and the exit. Setting them equal gives for V2, the exit velocity, A1 V1 times the specific volume at the exit over the specific volume at the entrance over A2. Since air is an ideal gas under these conditions, we can use the ideal gas equation, PV equals RT. Solving for the specific volume, we get RT over the pressure. Applying this to both the entrance and the exit velocities, we get V2 over V1 is equal to P1T2 over P2T1. We can solve that expression for the exit velocity and then plug in the numbers. Doing so, we obtain an exit velocity of 244 feet per second. You may wonder why we didn't get a velocity of zero since earlier we assumed that the kinetic energy at the exit was negligible. Notice that assuming that the kinetic energy at the exit is negligible is not the same thing as assuming that the velocity at the exit is zero. You can have a small exit velocity without much kinetic energy without having a zero exit velocity. 
And now we're done.